All right, this time we are going to differentiate a product of three functions. The first one is theta, and then the next function is cosine theta, and then the third one is sine theta. So it's really a product of three functions. So what do we do? We still have to use the product rule and just do it carefully. And since we haven't generalized the product rule for three terms, so let me do the following for you guys. I'm going to call the first function right here the little f, not this one, but just you know the usual notation that we do, okay? And then this right here, I'm just going to denote that by g. So let's go ahead and put them down on the side. f is just equal to theta. And again, do not get mixed up with this notation and that notation. Just ignore this for now, all right? We're just looking at the function part and then just do the breakdown. All right, and then the other part is g equals sine theta times cosine theta. And let's go ahead and get to work. Differentiate this, the derivative of theta is just equal to 1. And to differentiate g, well, we have to use the product rule for this. So to do that, let me just go ahead and put this down right here. I'm going to keep the first function, which is sine theta. And then this is my second function, right? We will have to differentiate the second function. The derivative of cosine theta is negative sine theta. So let me just put it down like this, negative sine theta. Okay, and then we are going to add the second function, which is cosine theta, and we have to multiply by the derivative of the first. The derivative of sine theta is cosine theta, so this is what we have. And we can simplify this a little bit before we multiply, right? So let's say this right here is just negative sine squared theta, and this right here is cosine squared theta. So in fact, this is okay, but the truth is, there's an identity for this. Cosine squared, let me write it down like in the usual way. When we have cosine squared theta, if this is a minus sine squared theta, this right here, right? It's actually the same as cosine of 2 theta, right? So from here to here, it's just the double angle identity for cosine. So if we use this, the answer will be shorter, so we are going to use that. I'm not sure the answer in the back of the book though, but like, mm, you can just do this, it's actually better. All right, so let's go ahead and just write down f prime of theta. So I'm going to do this times that, which is just theta times this, all right? Cosine of two theta, cosine of two theta. And then next we'll just do this times that, and that will give us plus sine theta, cosine theta, and then we times that by one. And the truth is, the truth is, for this right here, all right, for this right here, notice this is almost the same as what? It's almost the same as the double angle identity for sine. This right here, it's actually the same as one half sine of two theta. Because sine of two theta is, like this part right here is two sine theta, cosine theta, and you see this two and that two will cancel, and we get that back. So in the end, perhaps I will just replace this with what I said right here, and now I will call it for the day. <laughs> so finally, we see we have theta times cosine of two theta, and then this red part is that, which is one half, and then we have sine of two theta. Hmm? So if you use the double angle identity, the answer will be much shorter, just like that.